Oakland is. My name is James Cagney. Uh, our guest today is Tamiko Johnson. Tamiko is a uh, project manager for public health in Alameda County. Um, please welcome her to the show. Uh, Tamiko, thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. What is public health and, and I guess what does it mean to the, uh, to the community? Okay. Um, first, when you talk about community, I'm from Oakland. I was born in Vallejo but raised in Oakland, so I care a lot about Oakland and I know your viewers do too. Mm -hmm. Um, and public health, I, I'll explain it this way, everyone hopefully has been to the doctor. And what doctors do is really um, treat people for individual illnesses. If they're not feeling well, they try to figure out how to make them better. Um, people go in for well visits and really try to figure out how to prevent illness. And public health does that for the community. So if we think about Oakland, for example, public health professionals like myself really look at what makes Oakland healthy and what makes Oakland not healthy. So public health is about making sure there are good schools, that there is immunization for young people, adequate transportation that's affordable, um, that there's a fair criminal justice system in this county, um, and that people have jobs, good jobs. So that's at the core of what public health is about. And so a job in public health could be anything from um, helping someone learn how to stop smoking to working on policies that will make sure we have good schools in Oakland and make sure that people have jobs. So that's fascinating. So it is not just medical, uh, just medical help or medical assistance or, or even for seniors or, or whatever like that. It's for the entire community as a, as a whole, as a unit. Yes, so public, there are people in public health who track disease, everything from like tuberculosis to obesity mm -hmm. in populations. And we're not really concerned with we are concerned, but we're not only concerned about the individual. Our concern is really everyone. It's, it's an all of us approach mm -hmm. um, versus the medical approach. We really think that it's absolutely necessary that people have a medical home and a doctor to go to, but that's not going to solve um, the health issues that we have um, in this county and, and in other counties um, in California. It's really about the holistic approach mm -hmm. to health. So mm -hmm. not everyone thinks of it this way, but education is health the number one indicator that someone is going to be healthy is if they graduated from high school. Got you. Um, so we're partnering, and lots of public health departments are starting to do this, realizing we can't just operate in our own little bubble. Uh -huh. We really need to partner with education, with the probation department, with the sheriff's department, yeah. with these folks to fix what's really happening in terms of the community's health. How did you come into this uh, as a career choice? That's an I kind of fell into it. I'm glad I'm here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I was noticing in college, I actually started off pre-med and didn't end up going to medical school, didn't go down that path. But I realized that there were lots of black women in my life who were getting sick. And so I started doing research on one particular illness, lupus, lupus mm. disease, and found that black women um, are diagnosed and die at a much higher rate than white women do. Mm -hmm. And so that led me to uh, discover public health and the tracking of disease over time among populations. Um, and I got the opportunity to work with youth violence prevention, which mm -hmm. again is actually a public health issue. Right, so right, let's, right. let's figure out why young people, what the root causes are about why young people are shooting one another. Gotcha. Um, and I started working for the public health department in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, really lucky to work under our old director, Arnold Perkins. Uh, learned a lot about public health from all of my colleagues and went back to school to get a public health degree mm -hmm. and wow. a social work degree focusing on policy. Wow, wow. And when I came back, uh, they got me a job there again, and I've been there ever since. That's really powerful. You, you mentioned a couple as far as, as you know, the health for, for black women uh, and I guess also youth violence or whatnot. What are some of the, I guess, bullet points that come up under, under public health that we, or even myself, wouldn't expect? I mean, what kind of uh, elements do you specifically work towards to, mm -hmm. to help, to assist? So one of the things we've done, uh, one of my colleagues work, works in the education realm, um, as you know, Oakland has gone through quite a few school, school closures. Sure. And one of the things we've looked at is um, what are the indicators for communities around school closures? So if we're going to look across the, the city of Oakland um, and Oakland Unified, what are the, if we look at communities, we need to look and see, you know, do they have a grocery store? Do they have what they really need to thrive? And should we really be closing the school down in this particular neighborhood that already doesn't have a lot of things? Mm -hmm. um, my focus right now is on criminal justice. And one of the things we're looking at is a little complicated. I won't go into it, but 
Alameda County now has responsibility for what they're calling lower le lower level offenders. Okay. Um, so um, formerly incarcerated persons in this county have a new pot of money to work with, mm -hmm. and so I'm working with a lot of partners to create a grant program to give money out to community-based organizations to make sure that they can find housing and employment okay. and those kinds of things. And that's not really traditional public health. Traditional public health is let's track tubercul tuberculosis and let's okay. make sure that kids have dental sealants and those kinds of things. So working closely with the criminal justice system is really, really different. Got you, got you, I can imagine. Um, mental health as well, because I, I guess like uh, uh, people that have issues with, uh, well, all manner of mental distresses or whatever like that certainly need some kind of um, assistance. Is are there wings also that help with the mental health uh, issues for people in Oakland and stuff like that? Yes, yes. So um, the department that I work in is under a larger umbrella, the Healthcare Services Agency, mm -hmm. and another umbrella is behavioral health care, and they actually handle all of the mental health concerns. Um, and we mainly deal with um, the neck and below rather than <laughs> the head. So, Got you. Um, mental health is in a different different spot. But, but for the population that I'm working towards, the mm -hmm. formerly incarcerated Population mental health issues are definitely something that we're going to be looking at addressing with the funding that we're working with. Because I, I guess part of it is trying to get people to rethink of their lives in a completely different way to get them out of the prison system. Uh, I'm assuming, or what kind of work do you do to, to help young people avoid taking those, those easy tracks? That's a really good question. I'm, I'm likely not the best person to speak to it, but I think this is a really good example. Um, public health is able to identify maybe that that's a need, that mental health services are a need, but I'm really relying on my partners out there in the community who know these young people, mm -hmm. who know these issues to actually provide those services. So it's a, a perfect example. Gotcha. The planning process I'm going through right now is engaging experts in the field mm -hmm. of um, criminal justice, and we're actually focusing on a, the adult population right now, mm -hmm. um, but those folks are actually feeding information to me around what's really going to work with this population. Gotcha. So I'm, uh, public health is really a neutral body at the table. Okay. I think that's why we're well poised to work in this field um, because I can facilitate conversations with my public protection partners in a way that um, might be a little harder if we were actually uh, involved in criminal justice more directly. How, do you, how does public health work as far as politics and, and money? Because I, you know, I guess it's sort of like you, hearing you, it's, it's like a, it's kind of almost like a, just a grassroots uh, uh, community-based um, program mm -hmm. that's kind of beneath what usually runs a city, the, the political under, you know, pinnings of, of like how, how a city actually works. How do you work with the political machine between, I guess, like the people and, and the, the, Alameda County and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, how does that work and how are you guys actually funded as well? It's a good question. So one of the things that I used to do in a, a prior job at Public Health was work with community members around the obesity issue. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna jump there from what I um, do now. And what we ended up doing was saying it's not just about the food that you're putting into your body, it's not just telling individuals to do better, it's really about helping communities find those access points to uh, policymakers who can make those changes. Mm -hmm. And so we would um, work with parents and young people in the community to say, okay, why does your particular community look like this? Let's identify the environmental factors, that's a word we use a lot, that are causing East Oakland to look a little different than Rockridge, mm -hmm. for example. Sure, right. um, and so really helping young people and adults to understand who, who's the Alameda County Board of Supervisors and what relationship do they have with the city of Oakland and then there's this board for the Oakland Unified School District. Gotcha. And so public health is again playing a really neutral role in that and really informing the community about their options in creating change. Um, I'm here really speaking as a, as a resident and sure. as an individual involved in public health, but sure. I think we are, the public health department is ultimately um, underneath the Alameda County Board of Supervisors. So we kind of okay. keep a low profile. Okay. Um, and your funding question is a really great one. We have a lot of different funding streams. Okay. We do maternal and child health work and that gets funded through some state and federal dollars. We have a lot of money coming in through HIV and AIDS, through the feds. We do a lot of um, grant writing to private foundations mm -hmm. in the area and nationally. 
um, that provide funds for us. So it's a really complicated funding mix. That, sure, sure. Um, I'm so grateful that uh, at my job we have a great administrative director because I don't know how he keeps it straight. <laughs> <laughs> glorious, glorious. Um, what is the Women's Policy Institute? Okay. I, I really wanted to bring this up because it, it is right now one of the most exciting things I'm involved with. It's a statewide program that you apply to for women mm -hmm. <laughs> in the state of California to really learn the process of how a bill becomes a law, kind oh, of wow. like that cartoon okay, gotcha. in Sacramento. Gotcha. So there's a lot of language that I think most people don't understand that they use up there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, How do you actually come up with an idea and get someone to take that and introduce it? All of those things are things we learn. Oh, wow. So this year there are about 30 of us divided into a few teams and all of us are social justice advocates. So I'm on a criminal justice team with five other women. Uh -huh. There's a domestic violence team, reproductive justice, and all of us, each team is coming up with a bill that we're introducing mm -hmm. with the support of a nonprofit agency and a legislator. And we're learning actually how we move that bill all the way through and our hope is that we'll have five or six good bills on the governor's desk by the time it's over. Oh, that's extraordinary. Um, is there any that, that you can talk about as far as like what you ideally would like to see for the city of Oakland or the county of Alameda um, uh, that would be a law that you guys would, um, would try to support and be behind? But one of the ideas that we've had, and we're still looking for a legislator to pick up this idea, so if anyone's watching, that would be great is that in this county and in many other counties when people are released from jail or prison, most of the time they don't have the ID that they um, took in with them, if they even had ID on them. And so when you get out and you want a job or you want a place to live or you want to apply for any kind of benefit, you need a source of identification. Uh -huh. Got you, got you. Under what circumstances do would people watching feel like, I have a situation where I feel like the, pub, the public health department would be the ideal help for me in this in this thing. What kind of uh, you know so sort of like what kind of uh, situations are you are you sort of like yeah bring this to us bring hmm. this to the public health department. It's a really good question um, because we do so much. So yeah, because it things. sounds like a, just a huge huge umbrella. It is and it is and we also provide a lot of grants to community-based organizations. So there are other okay. county public health departments that actually do a lot of direct service. Mm -hmm. We don't do as much of that. So if you're a community-based organization and you work with mothers, mm -hmm. there may be some funding that you could partner with public health on. Mm -hmm. um, if you are interested in the areas of housing and economic development and criminal justice, which I work on, um, our Place Matters initiative in the county would be a great place to contact and um, get involved in improving the lives of Oakland citizens in those particular ways. Wow. So, yeah, there are lots of different opportunities and entry points. We also have a public health commission, uh -huh. um, which represents all of the county, not just Oakland. Yeah. Um, and you could contact uh, your board of supervisors member, uh -huh. um, as well as that commissioner, if you had specific ideas about how public health can get involved. And all of that information can be set, found on the website for our department. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just uh, briefly too, uh, do you guys at all work with or learn from uh, other cities and counties across the country as far as what they're doing and accomplishing with their public health mm -hmm. system? Is there other counties that are really uh, teaching or are you teaching other counties uh, as well? It's like. Uh, how to better utilize the services in public health? That's a really good question. Um, depending on the area, um, I know that they have nutritionist associations that are national, and of course we're going and presenting that information. There's the American Public Health Association, and every year we send, send a lot of people there to present on the work that public health is doing and learn from other counties and jurisdictions about that work. Mm -hmm. um, the initiative I'm a part of, the Place Matters initiative, is national. There are other cities that are attempting to look at those um, more social issues, like housing and economic development and criminal justice, and we learn from each other. So there's a lot of different opportunities for other counties to find out what we're doing and for us to learn as well. So, Do you guys do like internships? I, you know, not just for, I guess, like young people as far as like you know, trying to get jobs and stuff like that, but just, uh, just anybody that would be interested in doing some work in this field. Uh, are jobs easy in this, uh, in this, uh, in this field? Uh, do you guys do like internships mm -hmm. for college uh, kids? So I've definitely had um, high school interns. I've also had um, 
a master's level intern for social work since I have a social work degree. They have requirements that they have. Um, we in public health don't have a formal internship program. It's something that I think we really need. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to push internally on that. But the, I mean, you could apply to the general county application to find out how to get into public health. Mm -hmm. um, it is civil service, so there are, there are a few hoops to jump through. Sure. Um, but I think it's a wonderful place to work. Um, and public health in general, again, is broader. So there are lots of nonprofits that need good people that definitely um, would take interns and anyone interested in whatever field of public health people might be interested in. Yeah, because you had mentioned also about uh, working with uh, young people and, and kids before. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know if I asked or if you really spoke about if uh, public health does specific presentations for um, for our high school kids. Um, yeah, uh, talk about that a little bit. Do Absolutely. You There's a, a program um, that one of my colleagues is running um, that we created called Public Health Solutions. And a group of people got together and said, you know, we really want to make sure that young people in the city of Oakland, uh, particularly low-income people of color, understand what a public health is. As you said, you didn't know what public right, health is. Right. We want to start with the high school students. So it's um, a program that's, that started at one of the continuation schools in Oakland mm -hmm. and is being expanded right now. So we have a curriculum where we talk about public health and what it means for that young person's life in their community. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a program that's engaging those young people in about 10 of them, I think, a year, uh -huh. get placed with our department and other public health um, organizations throughout Oakland. Got you. Uh, do you have goals for your for yourself, for your department uh, for this year? Not for my department. I mean, I think for myself, I think it's really about the Women's Policy Institute and learning as much as I can about that so that I can bring it back to Oakland and help other people here really understand how policy is made. It's it's pretty secretive. <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> it's secretive. very insulated. And, mm -hmm. and as far as like if you're not in the circle, then you just absolutely have no idea what's going on or even how you can help and participate yes. and stuff. Yes. So I want to learn as much as I can and share with other people here about that process and encourage any woman. Um, I think they don't take high school students, but okay. after that, any woman who's interested in learning this process should definitely check out the Women's Policy Institute. Type it in your search engine Women's um, and Institute. it'll come up. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, glorious, glorious. And, and again, just for myself, uh, that's a brand new um, uh, department for the public health the, uh, that's just like a... No, I didn't clarify. Thank you for asking me that. It's actually a program created by the Women's Foundation of California. Oh, okay. And so they have basically put out an application for anyone, any woman, I should say, statewide who's interested. Okay. So it's not affiliated with my public health department. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, Tamiko Johnson, uh, project manager for the uh, public health department in Alameda County. Uh, thank you so very much for uh, coming and being on the show today. Sure, thank you. Uh, again, uh, this is Oakland Is. My name is James Cagney. We'll see you later. Thanks again for, uh, for coming in. Lolly, this meal looks delicious. Thank you. You're welcome, baby. Hand me the salt. Uh, no. What? I can't. Why? Because I love you. Are you feeling okay? Do you know what the number one killer of women is? Heart disease. So from now on, we eat healthy and exercise. All right, I got you. Now, I can't give you the salt, but I can give you plenty of sugar. <laughs> Find out more at GoRedForWomen.org. Welcome back. My name is James Cagney. Uh, our guest is uh, new Oakland is guest host Thomas Johnson, uh, who is a CPA at the uh, Ferguson and Company. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Um, what kind of services does your uh, company provide? We are a full service CPA firm. We provide auditing, tax, accounting, management advisory services. And under that management advisory services, uh, we prepare cash projections, sales projections, uh, income statement analysis, and all of those kind of uh, financial uh, analyses. Yeah. You, you are here now because uh, it is tax time. So uh, one of my first questions is what can, uh, what can you tell, say, small businesses how to help themselves uh, in dealing with taxes and, and stuff like that. Start early. 
start early and gathering your information and uh, putting it together for your tax preparer. The uh, managing partner of the firm, Michael Ferguson, is a tax expert par excellence. Uh, hopefully he will come on a little later in the year when it's closer to, to the tax filing date and give us some tax tips and suggestions. So uh, the, the, the tax part of it will be handled by him, but sure. uh, um, we do have a full service tax. So Got you. Tax w department. What kind of uh, advice would you give for, for individuals? What kind of things do, uh, do people not really consider or think about when they are collecting information for their taxes or even preparing their taxes? Well, you, we get back to the same point. Start early. Um, you can't wait until December 31 and assemble all your data. Mm -hmm. What you'll end up doing is taking a, a big bunch of papers uh, in a shoebox to your practitioner who's then going to double what he charges you for the hassle that you're creating. Mm -hmm. And things get lost, misplaced. So start early. On a monthly basis, set out some time to put all of your financial information together. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, um, you have an accountant. Uh, that will give you timely financial statements, and especially if you're a small business. If you're a small business, you need timely financial information. That is, monthly. As soon as you get those bank statements, that stuff should go to your accountant, uh, to your consultant, so he can get put it together and create a financial statement for you so you'll know the results of your operations mm -hmm. for the prior month and up to that point. Got you. Do I need, as an individual, do I need to collect uh, receipts? I mean, what do oh, I do? How can I, you know, help myself? For big money items, you always need to, to mm -hmm. co uh, collect receipts. Um, do it, as I said, set aside a month. Do it on a monthly basis. Get them all together, staple them together, and uh, they'll be there for you to report on. Some things, uh, you have a ceiling that the IRS will allow. Uh, other than that, ceiling uh, that they allow, you would have to have documentation. And that's why you want to keep all of the uh, copies of the receipts to make sure that if you're over that ceiling, you can document it. Mm -hmm. Based on uh, the time that you've worked, uh, are there things that you wish people would not do or stop doing? Uh, again, I, I wish people would, and especially small businesses, and I'm uh, aiming most of, uh, of this at small businesses, um, get your stuff together early. When you start a business, it's very, very important to get your accounting uh, procedures uh, in order. Uh, because as the business grows and more time lapses, then it's harder to go back and pull that information together. Uh, it's harder to remember that you took uh, 10000 out of your um, savings account and, and, and bought equipment and furniture and what equipment and furniture. You, it's very difficult to keep up with. So you need to do it immediately gotcha. and consult with your uh, accountant or financial consultant on a monthly basis, even if it's only for 30 minutes. Uh, if a small business owner is watching this program and just happens to pass by and they actually, for whatever reason, don't have an accountant, um, how would they be able to contact you or, or, or does your company still take uh, small business Oh, most clients? definitely. Most definitely. Just call and uh, get an appointment and we'd be glad to talk to, uh, to anybody. Uh, that uh, that has accounting needs. Okay, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, again, Thomas Johnson is the uh, also guest host for uh, Oakland Is, as well as being a CPA here uh, for Ferguson and Company here in Alameda County. Thank you for coming back. Look forward to seeing you again on the uh, on the show as a host. Thanks. It's been my pleasure. All right, peace to you, and thank you again. All, All right, right. Well, this is uh, Oakland Is. We will see you again. Have a good one. Hello, I'm Social Security Commissioner Michael Astro. And I'm Scott Gould, Deputy Secretary for Veterans Affairs. Every two minutes, the U.S. government receives an identity theft complaint. Recently, we've learned that more and more people are getting scammed out of their money when they give their personal information to criminals who contact them by phone, email, or text. These criminals often say you've won the lottery or they claim to be from a government agency needing certain information, like a Social Security number. 
Treasury, Social Security, Veterans Affairs, and other government agencies will never contact you by phone, text, or email and ask you for this information. If you get contacted like this, it's a scam. Hang up. Delete the email. Call the authorities. Don't let criminals take your money. Protect yourself. Never give your social security number or bank account information to anyone unless you initiated contact. And watch your accounts to make sure that all the activity is yours. Don't be a victim. Visit stopfraud.gov or call 877-ID-THEFT to learn more.